Hi everybody, this is Gabe from ShutterStation.com. This is our first video tip for the site and I thought I'd show you how we convert to black and white uh, using Aperture. So let's just run quickly through uh, the way we like to do it. Uh, just to start, let me just uh, uh, go through the, the, I guess, the obvious way, which is uh, in Aperture we tend to work top to bottom in the adjustment bricks, which are these here. Uh, so basically what we would do traditionally is, you know, mess with the, uh, with the uh, uh, temperature, uh, exposure, add a bit of blacks, you know, go, go top to bottom, right? You know, enhance, add a bit of definition maybe, I don't know, anything we do. And then at the end of that, uh, maybe go to the micro mixer and convert it into black and white. That certainly works. Uh, that is a way of doing it, but uh, it's not the way we like to do it because uh, you can't see exactly anything that's happening or how it's going to turn out actually in the black and white if you do all these things first and then leave the black and white conversion till the very end. Um, uh, so let me just get rid of all this, uh, remove all adjustments, go back to the original, close everything. So this is the way we, we would start, right? So um, let's show you how we like to do it in a little tip uh, that gives us a lot of control when doing black and white imagery. And I'm going to use this image not because it's a very good image, because it's obviously it obviously isn't, uh, <laughs> But it, it has a lot of colors and, um, a, a, you know, big areas of defined colors. And uh, that, that will help us, help us see how our adjustments affect different colors, right? So let's start. Uh, first step, what we do, what we like to do is go direct to Monochrome Mixer and convert it into black and white. First thing. That way we, we see it in black and white. And throughout the whole process, any adjustment we do, it's on the black and white image and we can see what we're doing uh, and how we're affecting it right from there. So first things, you know, play with the, uh, with the filters. Uh, these are uh, filters that affect very, very much how the image works. They try to mimic what we used to do in the film days. Uh, when we shot with black and white film, we used to put a filter in front of the lens uh, that, would, that would give us a different effect. So for example, a typical one was the uh, red, orange, or red or yellow uh, filters. I, I typically like to use red a lot. What red does is that it, uh, l it lightens all the warm tones. So red tones, let me get rid of this just so you can see the color. The red tones become lighter and the blue or the cold tones become darker. So as you can see, blue becomes almost black in this case and the yellow and the, and the red become lighter. Uh, it, blue, for example, has the opposite effect. Gets the blue lighter and the warm tones, the yellows and the orange, it makes them uh, darker. Um, so you can play with any any of these. Uh, I have actually created my own presets for some films that I used to use uh, back in the film days. I still play with them sometimes. So you can have a look at how that looks, right? Let's start maybe with that one, right? Uh, our recommendation is if you start to play with these, I recommend that you get these three to total 100%. Uh, if you go over 100%, you're going to get uh, uh, blown out highlights and, and, and or blacks are going to turn completely black. Uh, obviously, that's that's a bit too much, but um, so yeah, just just try to get these three to total around 100%. It doesn't have to be exactly, but around 100%. Once we have this, then we can go all the way uh, to the top and start again. So affecting white balance because it's going to change the underlying colors in the image. It is going to affect the way the image looks. Let me just get rid of that. Then we can mess with the exposure and you know go and do do all these these fun things maybe. Give it a little bit more black. Uh, yeah, we could do a little bit of recovery to get rid of those highlights, but eh, it doesn't matter for this. Uh, in enhance, we can give it a bit of definition. So yeah, we can give it a bit of a bit more contrast. Oops, a little bit more contrast maybe. Uh, now here's the cool thing. Once we've got this, we have you know, a, a fairly nice looking uh, image in terms of the contrast and the and the and the, and the uh, gradation between blacks and whites, but if you wanted to affect it even further, we can actually use these things here to affect. This is going to affect the color brick is going to affect each of the colors individually. So let me go back, get rid of the color uh, of the black and white conversion. If we check this one, it's going to affect the reds. This is going to affect the yellows. This is going to affect the blues, for example. And we can actually go in further and pick, select the color picker and go, I want exactly that red. Get the yellow one and I want exactly exactly that yellow for example and we can go like that we'll do the reds uh, the greens and the blues and the whole thing cool but just to show you if, if I change the luminance in this one see how the the 
yellows get affected. Right? If I do the same thing with the with the uh, reds, the reds would start to get affected. And we can kind of isolate colors with this. Now, if we go to the black and white and we actually start messing with the luminance, we can see that all that is affected is those particular colors. So then we have a lot of creative control on what we want to do. Lighten up the yellow, darken it. I don't like it lighter to give it a bit more contrast. Let's go with the blue, for example. We can do the same with the blue. Oh, that's already black. It's not really affecting it much. You can see. I, I, I don't know if you can see it in the uh, in the in the small screen, but in in my big screen, this gets a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. So this is basically this this thing here is what gives you the the, the real creative control to do whatever you want with it. And then you know at the end, if you wanted to do it a, a classical black and white, you can give it a little bit of a of a vignette, for example. Right? And that's you know, in, in black and white days, that was kind of the typical thing. Have the the uh, the uh, edges darkened. Uh, no, it looks pretty cool. Now let's go, let's go for example with that. Th th this one obviously has very very uh, specific colors, so it's easy to see that effect. But let's let's try it with this one, right? So this this one was a JPEG. This one is actually a raw image. So another thing we can do in this is actually play with the raw fine tuning things. Uh, so let's turn it into monochrome to start with. Yeah, let's play with this. The red filter looks good. Lightens up the the the. Uh, the reds darkens the the blues, orange similar effect but not as harsh. You know, let's try the blue. No, let's go with the red. All right, so red gives us a bit of separation between all of these. Right, uh, let's close that just to get it out of the way. Uh, with this one, uh, there are certain things that we can play with that that will actually affect the image a little bit. This is very 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 subtle. I don't think you're going to be able to see this in the video, but uh, but you know it, it does it does affect a little bit. The main main thing are these right here. So let's let's just lift the exposure just a little bit to make it a little bit darker. Uh, let's give it a little bit of black point. I like my black and white images to be really contrasty. Um, enhance. Yep, oops. Uh, let's let's add a bit of definition. Yep, that's good. That's another one that it, it's so subtle that it, it's it's you're probably not be able going to be able to see it. But now let's start playing with these. Right? If we change the luminance, look at what happens to the bottom, right? Because we're affecting the reds. And remember, this was red. Let's see the color image again. This is reddish, right? It's in that color range. So using the reds and using the luminance, we can make it darker or lighter. So let's make it lighter, right? Yellows, yellows are probably going to affect the same thing because it's it's also in the warmer tone. So it's you know it has an effect in the in the more yellowish tones of this this area now let's let's try with the blue for example the blue very 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 subtle around here right let's try with this and let's go and grab an area over here for example right and now let's play with this see, see the uh, see, see the the effect it has in this area it's very very subtle So playing with these gives you a lot of creative control on how a black and white image uh, it turns out to be. It doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter what the color one ends up looking like because this is what matters. Cool, and then again, if we wanted to do the classic black and white finish, we can add a bit of a vignette and uh, yeah, make it a bit more prominent so that you can actually get to see it in the video. And there we go. It's easy. Any image, it this works with skin tones. Skin tones, usually depending on the type of, of, of person and their background and, and ethnicity, but it generally it's, it's usually the, the, the reds and the yellows that affect the skin tones. Uh, uh, blues turn, if you, if, you, if you go, for example, with the, uh, oy, in a monochrome mixer, if you go with a blue filter, the skin tones will become very, very dark. Uh, these will turn them lighter, which is usually the best way to go, but depends, again, on the skin tones. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Play with it. Have a little play with these, play with the color control. And that's it. Hope you liked the tip. And uh, visit us at shutterstation.com for more tips in aperture and other photography things.